Welcome to Mechanical Systems Design. This is the first of a series of videos that we'll ask you to watch in this class. And we'll use them for a bunch of different purposes. One is to recap topic readings, although we won't go into detail and you definitely need to read those still. Another is to do exercises together. And we'll set up a problem and ask you to hit pause. Then you'll work through the problem, pencil and paper, and then hit play and we'll walk through some example answers and, and what they mean. It's super important to do these exercises as we'll talk more about later. And we'll use them to do things like debrief projects and so on. And now you might notice as you go through these videos uh, that they might be a little spliced together in places. It can be a little hard to get these videos right in one take. And we'd like to be able to update the videos as we move along. So we've opted for clarity at the cost of a little choppiness in some places. In this first one, I'm just gonna introduce myself and our teaching team and your classmates. <clears throat> so first me, um, I'm, I'm Steve Collins. I'm an associate professor of mechanical engineering here at Stanford. And I've been here for a little over three years. Before that, I was a professor at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. Uh, and I've studied at uh, Cornell, the University of Michigan and Teo Delft in the Netherlands. And the most important thing to know about me in the context of this course is that I, uh, I love mechanical design. It is a passion of mine, a lifelong passion, and I love designing myself. I love teaching people design. And it's one of the main ways that I feel like I can make the world a better place. Um, teaching people how to combine their technical and creative abilities to, to make really cool, unique things. And also in, uh, the research that we do that can help people improve their lives. <clears throat> so I'm really excited to share that passion with you this quarter. So I, I first got interested in mechanical design as uh, uh, an, an undergraduate at Cornell, but really diving in deep uh, when I designed these walking robots. These are uh, robots that utilize passive dynamics to be very energy efficient. And this one on the left still holds uh, the record for the least energy used per unit mass per unit distance traveled for a, a bipedal robot. As a graduate student, I shifted more towards exoskeletons and prosthetic limbs to help improve people's mobility. And here you can see uh, some of the same ideas being applied. We've got uh, ankle exoskeletons that use no energy themselves and yet reduce the energy consumption of human walking. And of course, to make these things work, we need really robust systems that are very lightweight, uh, so we don't impede the person too much when they put it on before it starts to, to give them a benefit. Uh, more recently, my laboratory is focused on tools for designing exoskeletons and prosthetic limbs. We call these things emulators. So this uh, is a typical system. There's this big motor and controller that's tethered to lightweight instrumented uh, components that are worn on the body. And that way you can give uh, the user lots of the experience of interacting with lots of different candidate designs without having to build them in hardware, which is uh, very cumbersome. Um, here's a, a, one of our recent exoskeleton designs. It's a hip, knee, ankle exoskeleton that we're using to study how to optimally assist walking and running at a variety of speeds, uh, load, carriage conditions, and grades. <clears throat> it was actually designed by um, a couple of students in our lab, including one of our CAs, Patrick Franks, who's wearing it, and uh, Gwen Bryan, who's uh, operating the controls in these videos. Um, here's another example of a, a recent emulator project. Here we have ankle exoskeletons intended to improve the energy economy and speed of running. And on every step, the exoskeleton helps the person push off with their foot. And you can see that uh, these big motors here are uh, doing the work and there's Guan Rong Tan. Rong is one of the CAs for this class as well. Um, we've, we also study prosthetic limbs for people with amputation. Uh, this one is intended to try to help people maintain side to side balance, uh, especially when they walk on uneven terrain. And of course, if we're really gonna study balance, we need to uh, challenge people's balance. So here's a, a system we call Bump Bum. It's an open source perturbation platform for laboratory tests, and maybe someday clinical tests of balance in people with uh, impairments. And there again, we have uh, Rong operating the controls and having fun administering this test, I think. So we, there's a bunch of uh, great projects like this in our laboratory. I'm privileged to work with a fantastic group of people. This is uh, from summer of 2019, but our 
group still looks a lot like this. Um, amazing PhD students and postdocs who all have these projects that stand to improve people's lives by designing better technology, especially for people with impairments. And um, all these projects are heavy on biomechanics and, and neuroscience and control, but also mechanical system design at, the, at their core. So this is uh, an experience that I draw from a lot in teaching this class. I want you to be able to do things like the things we do in our laboratory. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, you can learn more at our website. We've got a bunch of media, videos, uh, papers there. And uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at Stephen H. Collins. We talk about our research and lots of other things in these areas. Now, I, I think it's, <clears throat> it's important to remember that uh, we're all people too. So I, I'm super passionate about teaching and my research, but I also am passionate about uh, my, my family. I spend a lot of time with these two guys here, Ty and Max, uh, now four and seven. And we go on adventures to the beach and the woods. They love to uh, get out in the snow when they can or just dig in the mud. They are uh, scholars. You can see them going deep in the literature already. And they're even starting some engineering projects. Uh, this is uh, civil, but you know, close enough. And I'm also very lucky in all of this to, to have a, a great a partner in my wife, Lisa. Um, so uh, now having these kids is wonderful, but uh, if you see me, <clears throat> if I seem a little tired sometimes, if uh, like maybe today, <laughs> it may be because I was uh, kept up all night by the kiddos. Um, and I also, I'm. Uh, you know, outside of, of, of those things, uh, if I'm not teaching, doing research, or um, doing family time, I'm probably out running, uh, riding my bike, uh, or surfing, and sometimes skiing. So that's a little bit about me. Here is a little about our teaching team. So usually we'd have this happen in person, but, <clears throat> you know, things are a little bit different this year. So I'll just say that we have a fantastic group of CAs this quarter, we have Isaiah, Ron, Patrick, Hojong, Amar, and Fariha, and they have a very diverse set of design backgrounds and educational backgrounds and even professional uh, backgrounds <clears throat> that we're going to draw on in this course. It's going to be really enriching for us. And uh, you will each be getting to know one of these people uh, really well because they, one of these people is going to be leading your coaching session. And I'll explain more how that's going to work in our next video. But just know that we have a, a, a really fantastic team here. And uh, although you'd be paired with one coach, uh, you should feel free to reach out to any of these people if you have questions about any of the projects or uh, questions about big design ideas or professional questions or personal questions, anything. Else. So that's a little bit about us. Now a little bit about you. And the teaching team and I are really looking forward to getting to know you all better uh, this quarter. Um, but for now, just a little bit about where you all are coming from. And here is literally where you are coming from. Uh, these are where uh, our students have requested materials to be sent. We have, most people have come back to the Stanford campus and welcome back, it's great to have you. We have a few people scattered elsewhere in California, a few people in the Midwest, and one person in Netherlands. Goedemiddag, goedemiddag. Most of us this quarter are mechanical engineers. Uh, we also have about a third of the class that's in product design and a smattering of other majors. That's excellent. About <clears throat> half of us are in our third year juniors. Great, taking the course in sequence. Uh, we have about a third that are seniors and 15% that are super seniors or maybe co-terms. So we have a, a diverse set of uh, experience with college. And um, this quarter we have three quarters of the class already has a personal 3D printer, which is excellent. You're going to be able to hit the ground running. If you're in that one quarter that doesn't yet, um, make sure to get started building your printer and tuning it right away uh, and work through that getting started document. The document is fantastic. It's battle tested by several generations of students at this point, and it can help you walk through every single step that you need to make successful prints. And if you put the time in now to do that, it's going to save you a lot more time later with failed prints uh, and, and trouble with, say, last minute issues before deadlines and projects. 
If you do run into trouble, know that our teaching team has a lot of experience with this. Your classmates do too, and might be able to give you tips. And there's a link to other resources, including a Piazza site, Slack site, and daily video office hours held by PRLCAs. And you can get to all of that uh, from the P3D resources that's linked from Canvas. Looks like we've got a range of experiences in terms of past mechanical systems design. Some of us have designed tens or hundreds of robots, uh, while some of us have designed none. Uh, most of us have designed a component or two, and most of us have done some coding in MATLAB or Python. And what we'll do is work to create diverse coaching groups so that you all can uh, learn from each other and teach each other in these, in these areas. Looking at the prerequisite courses, we'll see that um, most of us have taken 102 and 103 fairly recently and received pretty good grades uh, for strength of materials, statics, and physics that there's a bigger distribution and most of us have taken them a little bit longer in the past. And this is very common. And what we find is that students uh, don't have as much strength in free body diagramming or stress analysis uh, as they might think based on their prereqs. And so we'll spend the first couple weeks, uh, first really uh, four weeks, uh, pulling up that knowledge from the depths and strengthening it as we apply it in this new domain of design where the problems get much trickier. So even if you feel like you have a good understanding there, please go deep in this first few weeks and it will be a reward to you later. So that's it. Welcome to the class. We're really glad to have you here and I'm excited for an awesome quarter of designing together.